Leading Britain's conversation, The Nigel Farage Show. Mr. Nigel Farage. Thank you, Donald. Good evening, everybody. Well, it's an issue that never goes away in American politics, a hot topic. It's being debated all the time. It's an issue that is hardly ever debated here at all, but it's an issue that is setting Ireland alight politically. And we've got just 72 hours left until a referendum in Ireland on abortion. It's about the Eighth Amendment to their constitution. Do people want to get rid of the Eighth Amendment and allow abortion to become legal in Ireland? Right at the moment, it is illegal in Ireland. In fact, if you go for an abortion that is conducted in Ireland, it's subject to up to 14 years in prison. However, for the last 25 years, Irish women are allowed to come to the United Kingdom to have abortions in the United Kingdom if that is legal under UK law. What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about uh, terminations up to 12 weeks, subject to conditions, and terminations up to 24 weeks with more conditions. So what we've got here, and I do understand in some ways why the Irish Foreign Minister Coveney says, well, actually, this is about us taking back control of abortion policy, because at the moment, Irish women are subject to whatever UK law is. We, of course, in 1967, David Steele, Liberal MP, still around, he's Lord Steele, I saw him last week, he brought in the Abortion Act of 1967. What Ireland wants to do effectively, or what the Irish government wants to do, and it's being led very much by the Prime, or the Prime Minister, or Taoiseach, as he's known there, uh, Leo Varadkar, and, as I said, the Foreign Minister. In fact, actually, the truth of it is, almost everybody in Dublin thinks the law should be changed. Every political party thinks the law should be changed. Every media organisation thinks the law should be changed. Dublin thinks the law should be changed. And yet, the outcome of this referendum is very, very far from clear. So tonight, what I want you to comment on is if you were taking part in this referendum on Friday to allow abortion, legal abortion, how would you vote? And in a sense, you're not just voting on the Irish question, you're voting really on the 1967 Abortion Act in this country and how it's being conducted today. It's your judgment on that. And if you think, well, actually, what Ireland really needs to do is to get with the modern world to have the same laws as the United Kingdom, there frankly isn't a problem with it, then call me. Or 0345 6060 973. Or maybe you think, actually, do you know what? There are real problems with the abortion laws in the United Kingdom. It'd be crazy for the Irish, even if they wanted repeal, to go for the same kind of system we've got as the UK. Text me on 84850 and any other opinions on this, for many people, very, very difficult subject then please tweet using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC. And, of course, watch us on Facebook. Zuckerberg has not banned me. I've got no problems. I may have been critical last night, but I was. Actually, in many ways, I was politer to Mark Zuckerberg than the other group leaders. And my, my chief of staff in Brussels said to me after the meeting, the president of the European Parliament's uh, cabinet, uh, Tajani, Italian Tajani is president, uh, their cabinet had said to Aurelie, who works for me over there as my chief of staff, isn't it funny, Farage was the best behaved of all the leaders. So we're still here, you can watch us on Facebook Live, and you can comment there too. So how would I vote? What, what would I do if I were an Irish citizen living in the Republic of Ireland that I had a vote in that referendum on Friday. Well, I tell you, I'd vote no. I would vote not to repeal the Eighth Amendment. I would vote to keep Ireland's abortion laws as they are. Are they perfect? No. But I do not believe, I, 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 and I'm, I've, I've never been, I've never been what you would call a pro-lifer. I've always been more on the side of pro-choice of the woman. But I think our abortion laws right now don't work and I would not vote for them on this basis in Ireland. I'll tell you why. We at the moment, you know, if you are 22 weeks pregnant 
and you go into labour or there's a problem. We, using modern medicine, have a better than evens chance of saving that child at 22 weeks and that boy or girl growing up and living a full, normal life. And yet, we're allowing terminations up to 24 weeks. These same things are happening in the same hospital buildings at the same time. That, to me, is absolute madness. I think we do need to change our abortion laws, and I think we need to shorten the number of weeks. If I was an Irish citizen, I would vote against this change in the law on the basis that what is being proposed, frankly, isn't working in the UK. Now, I know that it's something people very rarely talk about in public in, 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 in British politics. It's an issue that the parties don't put in their manifestos. It's one of those issues of individual conscience. But there are very few people out there criticising our current abortion laws. I just have. That is my view. Let's find out what you think. Let's get a, crit a brand new caller who lives in Heathrow. Good evening. Yes, good evening, Nigel. I do listen to you most evenings. Sometimes I agree with you. Sometimes I feel like kicking my radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Chris, that's open debate, isn't it? That's exactly, good. But I always try to listen to you. Uh, Thank you. At least you're honest and straightforward. And I've always... Res I may not agree with you, but I do respect you. Thank you. Um, now, my only observation on this Irish abortion issue is... Why do men have a vote? This is a woman's issue. It concerns women, women's bodies, and I just really... Uh, men can have an opinion, of course they can, and they can give their views, but I don't feel they should have a vote. It should only be Irish women who should vote. All right, Chris. This. So what would you do... I mean, we're living in the modern world here. What would you do to those people who were born as men who now identify as women? Would they have the vote? Oh, come on. Um, no, I'm being... No, Chris, I'm being okay. serious. OK, seriously. If they are able to bear a child, then yes. Ah, but there are lots of women who were born women, who grow up uh, to be women, who, despite the fact in many cases would desperately want to have a child, are not able to. Would they be excluded? No, of course not. No, no. Basically, and anyone who is... A Anyone who is a woman, and I do think you're spitting hairs a little bit about transgender. Well, I tell you what, Chris, it's becoming a bigger and bigger debate across many areas of society. But all right, mm -hmm. if, even if we take that out of it, surely men have a right to vote on what is, after all, the Constitution of the Republic of Ireland. It concerns... They, they have a right to have an opinion and they have a right to voice that opinion, provided they do so respectfully and legally. But it's only a woman's issue. It's not the men who have to go through it. They don't have to carry the pregnancy. And often, in these cases, not right. always, you know, the man will do a runner anyway. Um, just my opinion, Nigel. No, 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 Chris, you've made it. It's a fascinating opinion. Uh, can I ask you, Chris, if you were an Irish citizen, how would you vote on Friday? Well, if I was a male Irish citizen, I wouldn't vote. All right, on principle. Uh, and if, OK, <laughs> all right, at least you're being consistent. Okay. <laughs> however, however, if I was a female Irish citizen, which I'm not, but yep. if I was, yes. I would vote yes. You would vote to reform, to change the laws. Chris, thank you. Well, Chris, there, fascinating perspective. He thinks it only affects women, only they should vote. Let's see what Leshmi, calling from Cardiff, thinks of this. Hello. Hi, I was just listening to the beginning of your um, show, yep, yep. and you mentioned um, you got your facts slightly incorrect about a 22-week baby being able to survive yep. to full adulthood. They yep. can't if they require CPR when they're born. They can't. Um, I, I, I was a pediatrician. I was an neonatologist okay. in St. Thomas's. I have worked on babies of that age. If a baby at 22 weeks is born and they require CPR or any advanced life support, they don't have a possibility of, uh, of survival at 22 weeks. At 23 weeks, it is possible, again, if they don't require CPR. If they do require CPR at birth, it's very, very poor prognosis. Um, uh, Let me fine. Thank you for that. Uh, but mm. my point still stands, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, if at 23 weeks, a, yes. a child being born can survive, how, um, can, it, how can it be right in, mm. the, in, in effectively the same building in the same hospital that yes. we are saving lives at 23 
week yeah. old babies, but aborting those at 24. I think what well, all, all I'm saying is there is an inconsistency here. Is the legal limit, so they wouldn't abort past 24 weeks unless no, at 24 severe, weeks. Even at 24 weeks, people you will be fined in this country would be very reluctant to abort unless there was a severe medical indication for that child unlikely to survive anyway. I don't know of any responsible doctor who will abort a 24 week perfectly healthy baby. Well, well legally, but, but, but let me, can, but legally they can. Yes, I know that the legal, but the law hasn't caught up with the medical medical ethics of that. I don't know any neonatologist or paediatrician or, or obstetrician who would abort a twenty four week old perfectly healthy fetus. Okay, would you would you keep the abortion laws as they are? Yes. You're happy with them. You're comfortable with them. I am comfortable with. Them. Well, uh, it depends on which which section you mean because I'm very comfortable that you should have the right up to twenty four weeks because. Um, or 23 weeks, really, because they wouldn't survive on their own anyway. However, I'm uncomfortable, personally, getting an abortion past 10 or 12 weeks, personally, in my if it was me, mm. because at that point, physiologically, that fetus is shaped as a human. However, they're not sentient, don't, whether you'd call it a life, as in a sentient life, at that point, is up for debate. Okay, so so I mean I mean I mean I understand what you're saying about medical ethics, yes. all right? Yes. But legally, at 24 yes. weeks, abortion yes. can take place in this country. Can well, yes. Yes. Well, well, I'm saying the law needs tidying up, Leshmi. In what way, though? Well, it is inconsistent. So you, it is yeah, inconsistent. It is inconsistent to me mm. that you can have a situation where fetuses that are born before the legal abortion limit and can survive yeah. Uh, yeah. you know can survive and make it and that we yeah. can abort fetuses that are older than that albeit by right. a few well, days but then then you have but the thing is you cannot have a blanket rule for every woman if there is a fetus that is a perfectly healthy fetus born at 23 weeks that requires no and can survive fine however if you have a fetus that's 24 weeks and you suddenly discover a catastrophic brain malformation do you think it's right for that child who has no quality of life and is likely to have a poor, you know, painful life, do you think that's appropriate for that child to survive? I think there are, incons- I I, I think there are some slight inconsistencies in this law, but I understand but what you... The you're... reason the law is inconsistent is because not every single situation is the same. No. In this instance, you cannot have a one blanket policy. This is about medicine, not just the law. And medicine is not perfect. No... One rule can apply to every single. No, I get that. I get that. So, if you were an Irish citizen, Leshmi, you would vote to repeal the Eighth Amendment. I would, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I believe that in some situations, you you would need to do that at twenty three or twenty four weeks. You would need uh, medically or ethically, you would need to abort a fetus. There, there are reasons. Okay, Leshmi, thank you very much for your call, for your insight into what's happening in hospitals, and to introduce the concept of medical ethics, which I thought actually was rather cheering in many ways. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusive in LBC, it's now 7.17. Abortion is a deeply contentious issue, and the tea shot, the Irish Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, has been out on the streets today in Dublin and elsewhere, trying to persuade voters to modernise, as he sees it, uh, to get rid of their Eighth Amendment, and to have very similar abortion laws to the United Kingdom. At the moment, Irish women can come to the United Kingdom to have abortions conducted, but they cannot be conducted on the island of Ireland. I'm asking you, if you had that vote on Friday, how would you vote? But before I do that, a very quick comment. You may have seen earlier this week Michael Gove saying to us that wood-burning stoves should be banned. They've got to be got rid of. He even said he thought 38% of some particularly dangerous particles went into the air as a result of wood-burning stoves. Fascinating. So we've been told by governments over the last few years that it's much better to burn wood than it is to burn coal. In fact, in many ways, governments have encouraged us to buy wood-burning stoves. In fact, the Drax power station up in Yorkshire, and if you sort of drive up the A1, you see these huge eight chimneys, I think there are, that looks massive. That now doesn't burn coal, no, because we've gone green. Now, what we do is we import wood chips 
from America and Canada and we burn wood in Drax. And now Michael Gove is saying that burning wood is worse for the environment than almost anything else. So, Mr Gove, you're going to ban people from using their wood-burning stoves in their, in their front rooms. Are you closing down the Drax power station as well? And doesn't it all remind you of diesel? We were all told, get diesel cars, you'll get more mileage to your tank. Um, it's better for the environment. So, actually, I mean, I went out there and bought a diesel car. Now we're told, diesel is ruinous. And they wonder why we don't trust a single word they say. Love to have an answer from Michael Gove. Is the Drax power station going to be closing down as well? Back to this very contentious issue of abortion. Uh, m loads of messages from you. You know, I would vote no in the referendum. Only women get pregnant. Why should men get the vote? Backing up the first caller we had tonight. Twitter, I get personally, I'm against abortion, but it's ultimately a moral decision for the individual to make. Well, Peter, in that case, then, if it's up to the woman to decide, you would change the legislation. Um, uh, lots of very strong views. You know, Deborah says to me from Oxfordshire, Ireland should keep the amendment. It's there to protect the unborn. Uh, but I think the one that I think really gets to the heart of this, Graham says to me on SMS, if abortion is carried out for the safety of the mother, I would support it. But if it's used as a form of contraception, I would condemn it. And Graham, the second criticism of David Steele's 1967 Act is that when that passed through Parliament, it was said that women having abortions would be counselled, would be spoken to, and the critics of legislation as it operates today say that effectively abortion in Britain today is an alternative form of contraception. I pass no comment on that, but that is what the critics say. Let's go to Seamus, a brand new caller to this show, who's calling from Belfast. Good evening, Seamus. Hello, uh, Nigel. How are you doing? I'm, I'm, a big, I've, I've, I'm a big fan of yours. Always have been. I think what you've done in British politics is uh, will be historical in a hundred years' time. But I think if I can get a quote in Irish for you tonight on abortion, you're talking other bollocks. I'll tell you why. Now, hang on, now, hang on, Seamus. No more bad language. It is only seven o'clock. Now, Seamus, OK, so you think the Eighth Amendment needs to be changed, yeah? Anyway, I have four kids. Yep. Um, three boys and a daughter. And I believe you have kids too. Yep. And I'll tell you what, you imagine some dirty animal or animals rape. I don't know if you have a daughter. I have a, have you have a daughter? I have daughters, yes. Right. You imagine some dirty animal or animals ripping your daughter. Mm -hmm. As I imagine some dirty animal or animals ripping my daughter. And you imagine that poor wee girl getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. And you imagine that poor wee girl, maybe 18, 19, 17, 16, and getting pregnant. And you're trying to argue or take it to the point Nate that they shouldn't have really to get an abortion. Could you imagine the detrimental effect of having that child for many, many years to come? Yes, Seamus, I can, absolutely. And I said, and I said, Seamus, Seamus, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I said at the top of the hour, I'm not a pro-life campaigner. I do believe in choice. And I certainly, in a case where it can affect the woman's health, or in this case, potentially their mental health, then I would not wish to oppose abortion being carried out. The reason I said, Seamus, I wouldn't vote, uh, you know, I wouldn't vote yes if I was Irish on Friday, is I don't think the Abortion Act is working quite as well as it should be in this country and needs some amendments. So we're not that can far I, away, can Seamus. I, can I have a right there, please? Absolutely. You imagine your daughter, your daughter getting pregnant by some animal or animals, right? And your daughter, your beautiful daughter, having to go on in life, carrying a child that she doesn't want, that will detrimentally affect her mental health, her life choices. Are you trying to tell me as a parent, as a parent, I'm not trying to advocate abortion, because abortion to me is personally wrong, but there are circumstances in which abortion has to be justified. Are you trying to tell me as a father to your beautiful daughter, who you love dearly, who you cradle in your arms when she was just first born, changed her nappy, are you trying to tell me that she would say to your daughter, daughter, I love you, but after the man or man who raped you, you can't have an abortion. No, no, Seamus, no, Seamus, I am not saying that. And I understand your emotions on this. And I bet 
the vast majority of people listening to this will agree with you. Jacob Rees-Mogg wouldn't agree with you. He thinks abortion is wrong in all circumstances, and he, he's a strong Catholic. And he, but, but Seamus, I'm with you on this. I think there are circumstances in which it is the right thing to do. Thank you very much for that call. Colin is a new caller from Basingstoke. Good evening, Colin. Good afternoon, Nigel. How are you? Hi. Well, thank you. Now, this is a hugely contentious issue in Ireland, but it's funny, we don't discuss this in this country very often, but when we do, boy, it does stir emotions, doesn't it? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. So how do you feel? How would you vote on Friday? So I'd, I'd vote no. I'd vote no against the, the repeal. Yep. Um, and I was telling your researcher, actually, I, I find my own opinion on this quite, um, quite interesting, because as a, a young 20-year-old, I would have been pro pro-choice. Yep. Um, but as I've gone into my late 20s and now early 30s, I find myself now on pro-life. Um, and, uh, you know, the situation that your previous caller brought up is a, um, it, it is a horrible one, a horrendous one. Um, but I, I think about this now from the point of view of the unborn child. Um, they, they have a life. Um, and, and who protects their life in this situation? Um, the, the, the woman has all the say, but, but the child can't because, you know, it's, it's still uh, very much uh, inside of her and uh, unable to, to voice its opinion. Um, yeah. But if unwanted children, Colin, come into the world, they may not be getting a very good start to life that could lead to a bad middle and a bad end. Of course, you know, um, I, I think you need to approach this with um, as much love as you possibly can. Um, you know... I take the situation that your previous caller described where your daughter was raped. Yes, OK, I, I would be horrified for that to have happened to my own daughter. Um, and uh, I, I'd be, you know, as most people would, deeply saddened. But at the same time, the life she now carries is my grandchild. Mm -hmm. um, and um, as much as I would hate the man who would do that to my daughter, I, 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 would, I, would, I would try to love my grandchild. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and Colin, that's, as you say, it's a very difficult situation. Uh, I'm sure there are people listening who've been in this situation. It's very, very difficult. I, Colin, I'm not for banning abortion, but, I'm, uh, but I do worry uh, that if the Irish vote yes on Friday, they vote for the abortion laws we've got at the moment, which I'm not sure are working. Colin, thank you very much. John says, if there is a heartbeat, that child has the right to life, so it's no for me. Stefan says, I'm against abortion, and I'm an atheist. Just want to take the religion out of the debate. Interestingly, Stefan, uh, from what I can see of this Irish referendum, it has not been the old Catholic Church against the trendy establishment. I think religion has actually been taken out of this debate to a very, very remarkable degree. Difficult to predict how this referendum will go on Friday. I have a funny feeling there might just be a silent majority out in the country that may well reject the Taoiseach's proposals. That's my current feeling on it. I don't go to the betting shop. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show exclusively on LBC. It's now 7.30 and we rarely debate abortion in this country. We've had an act since 1967 that allows legal abortion up to 24 weeks. I have a slight problem with that. I think that should be reduced a little bit. It's also true, I think, to say that the original assurances that were given by David Steele way back in 1967 have not really quite worked out, and that in many cases abortion is used as an alternative form of contraception. That said, I'm not against women having the choice. I never ever have been. I think the law needs to be improved, but the Irish have got this vote on Friday, and I'm asking you, how would you vote in that referendum? As it is, of course, two to three thousand Irish women every year come to the United Kingdom to have legal abortions. Before I get back to that, the Daily Mail today getting very heavily on a theme that I've pushed on this show for some time, and that is, what do people think about the House of Lords? Um, polling commission published today in the Mail, 76% think the Lords is out of tune with the will of the British people. 79% think the Lords is an outdated throwback. 58% believe the Lords was wrong to try and thwart Brexit. But most interestingly, only 17% believe the House of Lords should continue as it is. And the other bigger splits are those that just want it abolished completely and those that think it should be an elected second chamber. I am in favour of an elected second chamber where you get elected and serve just one term. I think the Daily Mail are right to publish this. I think... Uh, Whatever we used to think about the House of Lords being full of hereditaries, now it's full 
of Cameron and Blair's mates. It represents the London metropolitan elite and it's not doing the right job. Back to the Irish referendum. Jim is a new caller from Horsham in Sussex. Good evening, Jim. Hi, Nigel. How are you? I'm well. So how would you vote if you were Irish on Friday? No. You'd vote no? OK. No, definitely not. No, I don't see anybody looking at this from the point of view of the baby itself. The baby is conceived. It's alive. It's going to become a, a child. Um, people that want to keep their child, it grows up, it's loved, and all. The child has now started life. Yeah. You know, um, the you argument Jim has always things. been. The argument Jim has always been that it, it, it's not actually life until it becomes a sentient being. That's what some who are pro the abortion argument would say to you. You were talking about it earlier on mm. about is it twenty three weeks or twenty four? Yeah, I was. Weeks. You know, these things are, are irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. The fact of the matter is the child has been conceived. Pro-choice comes, don't get pregnant in the first place. And the majority of pregnancies that are aborted are not because of, I believe, rape or incest or um, some other reason. OK, so, not by accident. So, so Jim, let me ask you, would you, yeah. would you like to see the law in this country change? Oh, yeah. You Most would. Definitely. And is that a position that you've come to recently? Is it a long-held view? Is it a, is it a view based on your religious beliefs? Well, I'm a Christian. Yep. All of my life, I've been very blasé, abortion, yeah, sure, go and, you know, do it. Um, I'm older now, and I've had time to think about it. It has been suggested and spoken about, and I find that... Even people I've spoken to, women that, that have thought about abortion, tried to have an abortion for one way or another, drink two bottles of gin, things like this, have actually given birth and loved their children. Mm. You know, it's morally, think of it from the child's point of view. You know, well, no, Jim, I understand that. I, I understand that. But Jim, what about the argument that some of these women are simply going to have abortions anyway. They will either come to the UK or go to a backstreet clinic. Why not, as an Irish government, I'm not saying I agree with this, but I understand the logic of it, why not, as an Irish government, control it themselves? OK, let me ask you a question. What has the child done wrong? Why are you killing a child? It hasn't done anything wrong. No. It's not a criminal. You, you, you have bought a child from rape, fine. I don't agree with that. Why so, not have a guy, the rapist? He's the one that did the wrong. Well, what about the mental health of the woman who has been raped, who does not want this child? You're going to force her to go through with that pregnancy. At the end of it, she's probably going to go for a, a, an adoption or whatever else it is. It might scar her, Jim, for the whole of the rest of her life. Right, OK. In the abortion laws at the moment, if there is a, a life-threatening uh, problem then yep. the abortion is OK to go through. But it's very difficult to measure the mental health effects, isn't it? It is, but once you've killed a child, it's dead. Well, that... There's no coming back from that. Even the mother herself, if she's been raped, may not like the idea of an abortion. No, OK. Jim, you've made the point. You've made it very clearly. You've made it very strongly. You're far from alone in feeling that opinion. I'm going to go to Jackie, a new caller from St Albans in Hertfordshire. Jackie, good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm stunned. It's all men voting up, ringing up to say no. No, it's not. No, no, no it's not, Jackie. A few, a, few, a few women. OK, so... And some I'm of the men, Jackie, some of the men have said that if they were living in Ireland, they would abstain from voting on the basis they think women should make this choice. And I've yeah. also, I've also, Jackie, had SMS messages I read out to that effect as well. I, I thought he was right. Now, I'm Irish, as you can tell. Uh -huh. I, would, I would vote yes. OK. It's a, woman, it's a woman's right to choose. I have supported someone who came over from Ireland... I've walked her through that awful clinic at Ely, in Ealing. Mm. I have supported her. I've comforted her. And the awful thing is, she went back to Ireland. She had all the support in the clinic. They talked to her. They were really good. So all these people saying they don't get support and they don't get help, they get offered everything. They get made sure it is the right decision for them. It is their decision, not anyone else's. 
and the number of people who have died giving birth. There was a girl in the 1980s in Ireland who died by a stat by a cross giving birth because she couldn't have an abortion. She'd been raped by her father. Mm. And she died giving birth. Nobody would talk about it. There was a woman in the west of Ireland who should have had an abortion. She died because they wouldn't give her an abortion in the hospital, even though medically she was entitled to it in Ireland. We have, women have the right to choose what is done to their body. And Are it's you, up to ja- each individual. Jackie, I understand that point completely, fully, and I don't disagree with it. Are you happy that the option that Vara Carr has gone for is basically a replica of the UK mainland model? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm quite happy with it. I totally accept it. The idea that there's very few children born at 23, 24 month weeks who grow up to be active adults most of them if they survive have serious issues now that doesn't mean that i don't think you know if some if a child grew up with that i would love and support them yeah but equally i should have and every woman should have the right to choose and do you know who's you do you know that the american anti-abortionists have come into ireland and are putting up posters that are false they're putting up posters of babies at 15, 16 well, weeks sucking thumbs. I, I think whether it's um, whether it's the issue of abortion, whether it's the issue of gay marriage, there's been all sorts of interference in Irish elections coming in from overseas, despite Irish electoral law. Jackie, do you think, do you think that the vote will go the way you want it to and be a yes on Friday? I don't know. No, no. Well, actually... I am, I'm very scared for the women of Ireland that they will still have to get on the boat, get on the plane, and come to Ireland. Yeah. Come to England. You, uh, come to England, yeah. abortion. Yeah. And do you know what? If somebody phoned me up from Ireland and said, I need an abortion, my hand would be there to help them. OK. Jackie, very passionately put case. Thank you very much indeed for your call. Uh, Dare says to me, it's time for Ireland to take ownership of this issue and not put women through the trouble of travelling to the UK. Very much the point Jackie just made. Rick said, I'm listening to people's views and reading people's comments on Facebook and thinking, is it possible to support both sides of this debate in some form? Rick, actually, it is really, isn't it? Because in a sense, you know, I'm being slightly equivocal on this, aren't I? I mean, I think people expect me to have absolutely black and white opinions, but, you know, I am generally pro-choice, but I'm not happy with the, way le- with the way the legislation in this country is operating at this time, which is why, if I was an Irish citizen, I would vote against what's being proposed by Varadkar and say, come back with something better. So, yes, I think it is one of those issues, actually, where you can see both sides. I mean, Jacob Rees-Mogg was asked by Piers Morgan on Good Morning Britain, was he opposed to abortion, even in cases such as rape? And Jacob said, I'm afraid to say, yes, I am. Now, I, Rick, you know, I would suggest to you that the majority of people who are nervous about abortion legislation would still think in cases like that women should have the choice. So, yes, Rick, I think it is one of those issues in which we can be somewhat equivocal. It's still, I know there are those out there who take a very strong view on both sides. I do see a little bit of both in this. I don't like the legislation as it's currently working. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusive in LBC. It's 7.45. Campaigning's about to end in Ireland for the referendum. The vote takes place on Friday. There'll be a day of reflection tomorrow. And boy, people will be reflecting. This issue about legalising abortion is a huge, huge debate that is going on in Ireland. It's a constantly massive debate in America. It's something we hardly ever discuss. And yet, as soon as we do, I find there are huge passions on both sides of this argument. If you were an Irish citizen, how would you vote on Friday? Would you vote to allow legalised abortion much along the same laws that we currently have here in England. Laura is a new caller from Brentwood and Essex. Good evening, Laura. Hi, Nigel. Nice to speak to you. Good to speak to you. How do you feel on this? 
Well, having been raised a Catholic, I've always been very, very pro-life and couldn't comprehend how anyone could possibly go through an abortion. Mm -hmm. However, two years ago, I had my first pregnancy and had a child, and it's completely changed my mind. To make a woman go through with a pregnancy and a birth of a child that she does not want is barbaric. And it is a worse, worse than torture to make a woman go through that for a child that she does not want. Isn't the argument, Laura, that a lot of people who get pregnant that didn't want to actually adjust to it, and by the time the child arrives, uh, more than accept it? But how do you know that you would adjust and you would accept it? You don't know. If well, you don't know, pregnant, but... you decide you don't want that child, you don't want that child, and how can anyone tell you that you should have it? And for the caller that said, oh, you know, don't get pregnant in the first place, well, it takes two people to get pregnant. Unfortunately, lots of people get pregnant by mistake all the time. It's mm. just one of those things, but, you know. But, I mean, here's a point, happens. Laura. Here's a point, Laura. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this to you. Samantha in West London sends me by SMS. She says... I'm against changing this law. I don't think it protects the woman. Rather, it gives the man an excuse to walk away. What does she mean by that? Walk well, away from what? Uh, but walk away from his responsibilities. I mean, I mean, she is saying that life is sacred um, and that actually if women have abortions or men actually can force women in some cases in, in, into having abortions. Do you think that happens out there? Maybe. I don't know. But that's, I don't know how someone could force you into having an abortion because I, I've been with a friend who had an abortion. Mm. You go through so many processes before you actually get there, you would have the opportunity to tell somebody you were being yeah. into it and you didn't want to do it. So ultimately, Laura, your view is that the woman's choice matters more, and I'm going to use a contentious term here that the other side use, a woman's, li a woman's choice matters more than a potential child's life. Yes. Because yep. it's unfair. And as a man, it's, it's in, I don't mean this in, in a derogatory way, but men cannot possibly understand what a woman goes through. From the second you get pregnant, your life changes forever. Your body isn't your own. And it's not fair to make a woman go through that if she does not want to. Do you think men should vote in Ireland on Friday? That's a tough, tough question. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's a very tough question. It seems unfair to say no, they shouldn't vote. However, you cannot understand. You just can't mm. understand. Mm. It's not good for these male callers ringing up saying, you know, it's not fair. Oh, uh, Laura, they I've, can't imagine. I've got another one here. Uh, Martin's just sent me a tweet. He says, as a man, I wouldn't want to tell women what to do on this issue. There's a lot of men coming on to this. The more men than women coming on to this show tonight saying they don't think they should have a say on this. Um, Laura, listen, you've been through a big change of thought in this i thank you for being you know so personal so open so honest with us on that thank you and laura saying actually pregnancy fundamentally changes a woman's body her life it should be her choice big passions on both sides should men vote in this referendum on friday folks this is about the irish constitution how could men not vote given that is the issue that's how it seems to me adam is a new caller from east grinstead good evening adam Good evening. So, should women have the right to choose, or are the rights of the unborn child those that should be prevalent? Well, based on personal experience of being the son of a rapist, uh, the person who raped my mother, okay. um, and I am 70 years old, yep. I, I, would, I, I look at it and say the woman should have the choice. My mother and her fiancé... Mm -hmm chose to go through the pregnancy not that they had a great deal of choice because back then it was illegal to have an abortion well in of course it was yeah yeah so my parents um kept quiet for 52 years uh none of the family were aware that my father who had um, the man i call my father mm -hmm. who had um basically uh, gone through a shotgun wedding uh, wasn't the father of um, my mother's firstborn son. Yeah. Um, but, as I say, over over time, he proved to be the father of all fathers. So, Adam, were you 52 when you found this out yourself? I was uh, 52. 
52. Yeah, 52. So, um, my uh, siblings had known for a couple of years before that. Um, that's another story. But, uh, yeah, I was 52. And I was actually at a, at a funeral of a relative. Wow. That must have been a hell of a shock, Adam. Well, strangely enough, it wasn't such a shock um, because um, my mother had hinted when I was about 15 mm. um, when she lost her temper in an argument. Right. Um, but I'd, I had ignored it. But, uh, mm. you mm. know, when I was told, my mind went straight back to when I was 15 years old and thought, ah, well, it was true then. And, yeah. And Adam, so you were brought up by your mother... Um, and, and, and father. And father. And, and stepfather, and, effectively. Yes, of course. But you had a happy upbringing? Absolutely. And you've had a good life? Absolutely. And you're three score and ten? Absolutely. And you're sounding pretty hale and hearty? Yep. So maybe, Adam, you're an advert that says, actually, even if the circumstances of conception are difficult, life can be a great success. Oh, yes. Uh, but having said that, I still think that the choice, as it Is, was yeah. with my, my yeah. mother and father, the choice should be the woman's yes. choice. Yes, yeah. So if you were in Ireland on Friday, you'd vote to change the legislation, yeah? Yes, her body. Adam, great call. Thank you very much indeed. That Adam actually wasn't his name, but it was very brave of him, wasn't it, to ring up and say that. Wow, it really was. Let's go to Rebecca in Twickenham, another new caller. They're all new callers. Rebecca, good evening. Hi, Nigel. How are you? Hello. Do I detect an Irish accent there, Rebecca? Absolutely. Right. And are you voting on Friday? Well, I won't be in Ireland on Friday, so I won't be voting. But if I was voting, I would be voting no. You would vote no, would you? Right. OK, why? Yes. Because the Eighth Amendment is the only constitutional protection for the unborn. Now, at the moment, I would hope for a no vote. And then at a later stage, we can bring some amendments to that. I would agree with abortion on medical grounds. Yep. I would agree with fatal fetal abnormalities. Yep. I don't agree with protecting the procreation rights of rapists. Um, so I would like some adjustments in yeah, the future. Yeah, it's interesting. But for the moment. It's interesting. It's interesting. Yes. So, for Rebecca, the moment, you're. A yes vote is. You're another one. I mean, I mean, this is my position, Rebecca. If I was voting in Ireland on Friday, I, like you, would vote no, thinking that legislation yes. could be a lot better framed than it currently is. And just to, and just to, ju just to mirror the way that we're currently doing it on the mainland of the United Kingdom, uh, actually, they could have thought about it a bit more, couldn't they? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're trotting out cases like Savita Halapanavar, who did not die for want of an abortion. She died I've seen from that medical case, yeah. incompetence and mismanaged sepsis. That was why she died. But they're trotting out that the yes side, uh, they're doing this at the moment. Now, the, it's a very, very emotive issue. Uh, there are friends of mine in Ireland that say when they start this abortion debate, they feel like leaving the country. Uh, it's been going on for many, many years, but I do believe that a yes vote at the moment is a little bit extreme. Do you think Varad Carr's made a mistake here? Do you think if, he, if he'd put forward a more limited form of abortion for Ireland, it might have sailed through more easily? He has no interest in Ireland. He's our unelected Taoiseach. I have no time for the man. <laughs> OK, all right. I was asking the wrong person there, Rebecca, wasn't I? But thank you. I've certainly got an opinion. Well, thank you very much, and thank you to all of you um, who've participated in this. It really is a hot topic. It's something people genuinely care about. The one thing that came out of the last hour that perhaps surprised me in terms of the strength of its conviction with a number of people who think that men should not actually vote on this issue but they will on friday vote on this issue because it is about ireland's constitution we'll see what the result is no one knows what it's going to be but i begin to think that maybe the government might just lose this it's a guess you've been listening to the Nigel Farage show i'm back tomorrow night at seven at 10 tonight it's tom swarbrick but up next it's clive bull nigel thank you